Welcome to another film breakdown. I hope this works. StreamYard, YouTube, they're kicking my ass right now this week. I've tried two Vermont clips, two Vermont uh, breakdowns, recorded, done, finito, tried to upload, got blocked, tried it again with a different link, came out very grainy. So then I tried to do a JMU scouting report this uh, before this game, came out grainy, and then I just finished this James Madison one, and it came out grainy. So I'm hoping this works because right now StreamYard and YouTube are kicking my ass. So regardless, what a win by Duke. Thank you guys all for liking, subscribing to my page, and we're going to get right into it because this is going to be a fun video breakdown, a great video breakdown. So early, you're going to throw to Filipowski here because Duke wants to get Filipowski going. Filipowski played a great game against Vermont. He only had three points, but he did everything else. He controlled the game offensively, and he played a great defensive game as well. His defense in this game was fantastic also. Throw down to Filipowski early, try and get him going. Jamie's going to do the same thing, similar thing to what Vermont did. They're not going to immediately go double, but Fredell is going to – Jump and go. Like he's going to jump at Filipowski, jump back to McCain. And then when he does that, it's like, okay, now I'm going to go trap. When he does that, Jared McCain's going to go from the slot to the wing. So Fredell turns and he's going to go trap because they're going on the dribble. Trapping off the dribble, Filipowski. Filipowski doesn't rush it. What does he do? He finds his shooter and then McCain gets going and McCain gets going from the first possession and never look back. 3 0, just like that. Terrence Edwards Jr., great ball player, really good player. I like what Duke does here. They started Mark Mitchell on him first, and then they're jumping him on the ball screen. Jumping on ball screen, really good execution here by Duke because Phil Pawski, when you're jumping a ball screen as a big, you want to force him up the line. So force him basically go to half court. Terrence Edwards Jr. is retreating to half court. He picks up his dribble right there near half court. Really good play by Duke. Obviously, his outlet is going to be the guy at the free throw line. So what do you do? Proctor plays two. So Proctor's there, and Proctor, he's fine. He probably should have jumped just a little bit, like just one more millisecond in front of Bickerstaff, but it's okay. His job's done, and now Filipowski gets him back in the picture, but Filipowski just doesn't get vertical enough, and Bickerstaff hits a layup. But I like what Duke did first possession on defense jump the best defender, and make them work for it. Good execution by James Madison. Here, as you see, I paused that perfectly. Mark Mitchell is a great screener for Duke. He gets the shooters open. It's very underrated. Like His offense is what it is. But based on out of bounds, Duke torched James Madison for good sets and then just easy stuff. Here, double sagger for Roach. The key in this whole possession is the first screener. And every any type of offense, the screener has to hit somebody. And boy, does Mark Mitchell hit somebody. He is Terrence Edwards Jr., just knocks him back, concussion protocol. And so Roach is free. Bickerstaff sees this, so he has to show for Roach. When he does that, Phil Pawski is open, but Proctor is just going one read. He's going to Roach. But Phil Pawski is open on this slip right away because – Bigger staff jump too much. Proctor throws to Roach. Terrence Edwards Jr. Know he's, knew he got shot, so what is he going to do? He's going to overcompensate, and now he's blown by. And this is a great sign for Duke early in the game because we haven't seen mid-game Jeremy Roach in a few games, and second possession of the game, he's aggressive and pull up. Roach was fantastic. He dislocated his finger, and – Honestly, I forgot about it until after the game because that's how good he was. This right here is the possession of the game for me. Roach misses this, but Phil Pawski, dunk that shit. Mm, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. He's only done this. Only time I can really think of a dunk that he's made that he's had more impactful than this is in the Dean Dome his freshman season to just cap off the win for Duke against UNC. He has no leverage here, crowd, traffic. How many times have you seen Phil Powell just go up and lay it in with his right hand or left hand? That's fine. But Duke's sending a message. Duke heard after Duke beat uh, Vermont and then JMU beat Wisconsin that JMU is the more physical team. They've won 32 games. They're a physical team. They're really good defensively. Duke is soft. 
I know my thumbnail and uh, for the Duke NC State game says Duke is soft, and they were soft that game. But Duke's pissed off. Duke knows people are calling them soft. What's Phil Palski do? He dunks that shit. It's a little thing like that that just gets me going because that shows that Duke is has that gear. Duke's playing with an edge, and boy, is it fun to watch. Valuable minute. Again, baseline out of bounds. Sorry, I unmuted that. It is a flare screen. Or, I'm sorry, it's flex. I'm discombobulated. So, Duke's running baseline out of bounds into flex. So, that's a cross screen for Mitchell. Going back so you can see it. Throw it out to Ryan Young. That's the key. That's what sets it. Proctor's going to... Proctor's going to step in, set a back screen for Mark Mitchell once McCain gets the ball. Um, Mitchell's open, maybe, but that's the first read. Second read's a down screen to Tyrese Proctor. Proctor uses Ryan Young, and then Proctor goes to a spot. Proctor is really good in the mid-range, too, with his fadeaways of getting to a, getting to a spot, and he was magnificent after a rough shooting stretch in, early in the first half. Right here, good read, pushing, and gets to Mark Mitchell. And Mark Mitchell, you got to finish those, baby. I think you were one of six, one of eight from the field, and all of them around the rim. Like, this is something, Mark Mitchell, you got to punch this. You got to punch that. You may have gotten hit on the wrist, but you just got to, you know, you got to play through it. But he does play through it in terms of keeping the ball alive, results in a dagger three by Jared McCain. Big shot. Duke's up 12-4, feeling good. McCain's feeling good. So now this is a nice little set here for McCain. Shire Shire does a really good job. When a guy's hot, he's going to keep finding him. And this is more so just a read. Like, it works out to going to McCain, but it's a ball screen and a flare screen on the other side. So Phil Palski is coming to set a ball screen. He passes it to Roach. He's going to follow us at a ball screen. On the back end, as Jeremy Roach is going to penetrate and he's going to get to the nail. So the nail is the middle of the free throw line. When he does that, here comes Mark Mitchell. He's setting a flare screen for Jeremy Roach. And Jeremy Roach's guy, or for uh, Jared McCain, Jared McCain's guy for Dell is too deep in help. He's too deep in help, so he's screwed. And that's all the space Duke needs to get shots up. Fredell's here. Fredell's just a little too far, just that little, little lean. That little lean frees up McCain, catch and shoot, not even a contest, three for three from three in a blink of an eye, 15-5. Duke's clicking, right? Duke's clicking. I love this by John Shire. You don't think he wants this? His team got bullied in round of 32 last year. Duke's back in the round of 32, playing supposedly a more physical team than they are. McCain falls down. Lays it in, and John Shire's pissed. He's pissed. And I love that emotion to know, like, he he's that locked in. He knows. Sean Stewart, great job, dude. Great job. You keep that ball alive, and it results in a dagger three. Keep that ball alive, 15 to eight. James Madison, you know, made it a seven-point game. They could have came back just to make it more of a game, 18A, just like that. Anytime – James Madison thought they could claw back in. Duke just punched, not only punched back, but they just TKO'd him. Right here, dribble handoff, goes under, goes under again, wrote, or Proctor shoots the three. And this is the shot where, if you listen to the game, James Madison's coach was, he threw a shot, said Duke got away with an illegal screen on a three. This is the one he's talking about, a moving screen. And it wasn't even a moving screen, and I'll show you. Filipowski sets the screen, and then he just stands there. Number zero is going to grab Filipowski, pull Filipowski towards him, and then basically shield himself from guarding Tyrese Proctor. Coaching staff's like, hey, 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 Kyle Filipowski is holding my guy, holding my guy. Look, he's talking to the referee. That's illegal. That's illegal. And then they're begging for it. Three goes in, and then you'll see him talking to this referee that's beside the inbounder. He's like, dude, come on. That's an illegal screen. And it wasn't a legal screen. Your guy just pulled Phil Pawski into his chest and took himself out of the play. Good play here by Jared McCain. No situational awareness by the big. Tries to spin thing as one-on-one. Nice dig by McCain. 
leads the Duke off and running and transition threes with this group layups. Just look how quick McCain's twitch is when he catches this damn ball. And there's one that's gonna I'm gonna show later that I just makes me love way he shoots the ball. Like he's here. Look at how his hips turn. Just quick, quick. Just in one motion going. Rocking the white nails tonight. So here we go. Trying to hit Filipowski. It's not there. Tyrese Proctor does a good job here of attacking when Mark Mitchell's guy turns his back. You want to attack the help side defender, especially when they look like that. That's the right read by Proctor. And now number two turns late. Throw that dump down, Tyrese. Throw that dump down. You can throw that lob right now to Mark Mitchell for a flush, but instead throws that up and it's going the other way. You got to be smarter than that in that situation. And Tyrese will learn from that. It's a film breakdown. And Terrence Edwards Jr. is filthy. That is so tough. Like a tween between a double team. Are you kidding me? Kid's talented. Kid's good. I was wearing a Duke shirt, by the way. Let's pull over. This is my second or third time recording. It's burning up in here, so I'm sorry. I do have Duke over there, though. Tyrese Proctor got caught in jail. We've talked about this before in breakdowns that Duke does. Tyrese Proctor was a victim here. Coming off ball screen, going over top. Guard does a good job of sealing. Tyrese Proctor makes Kyle Filipowski have to play one on two. Who am I going to go? Am I going to go to the thought? Go get the guard. Am I going to stay with my guy? He leans towards the guard. Carey gets nice layup. It's a good two-man game play right there by James Madison. 132 games. Good job there by Jared McCain just attacking. Like, Duke did a really good job, man, just attacking him. And then Mark Mitchell, got to finish those. Got to finish those. This is what James Madison likes to do, get out and run. Should have been an and one. Terrence Edwards Jr., tough finish. Tough finish. Now, Jared McCain has his guy in jail, just like Tyrese Proctor was in jail. Has Terrence Edwards in jail. With him doing that, it's going to make Carey extend himself. Since Carey extends himself, gives a pocket pass for Jared McCain to flush to Filipowski. Puts the on-ball defender in jail, brings the big man up, dumped down, beautiful basketball. Two-man game, Duke's the best in the country. Duke's the best in the country. Ball screen action, just that that's the one where I just drool. I drool. Like, what he does here, what Jared McCain does right here is insane because he dribbles here, and then look at his hips. You Look where his feet are. His left leg is extended – Way out of outside of his body, his right's behind three point line, left's way in front of the three point line. Now he's going to do a pound. I mean, he does the pound dribble. He resets while the ball from the when the ball hits the ground to him catching it, his body twists. That is as a as a basketball trainer, like I teach this type of drill from like the free throw line, and I. It helps with your core and to see a guy do this in March Madness, just a little that punch dribble and then reset over the contested shot that he makes that look so easy. Like it's a layup. That is not easy. That is not easy. Like he dribble, punch dribble shot. That's so tough. That's so tough. And he made that look so easy. Again, James Madison has Duke in ball screen action. Jeremy Rose got caught on the guy's hip and make a tough layup. Jeremy Rose coming off a double stagger, a curl. Now he has his guy in jail. James Madison's coaching staff wants a hook. And they're not going to call a hook on that play because it's guard play. They're not going to call a hook on Jeremy Rose. Like, yeah, he has the extended, but. They're not going to call that. He does a good job of stepping through, finishing at the rim. A vet move by Jeremy Roach. 
Might be coming out of that little slump. He's not pressing. He did not show he was pressing this game. And if he's not pressing, Phil Pawski's playing both sides of the ball extremely well. Watch out, especially with Jared McCain doing what he does best. Roach attacking, ball screen action. He's going to hit flip early. That's a good key. You hit flip early here with a pocket pass. Flip absorbs the contact, goes up strong, finishes. It's a really good play because in the Vermont game, it seems like uh, Roach could have hit flip a couple of times on rolls and he just missed them. Here, finds his man early, flip, go off two, strong. Good, good. Here, another good play by flip. They're icing the ball screen. So with them icing the ball screen, it leaves a little pocket pass to Filipowski. He can get downhill. Now here comes a help guy. He's playing too. He's kind of in the sucker hole, but he's guarding Mark Mitchell, so he knows he's not a shooter. So he steps up. Phil Pawski is going to split him and get skinny and finish, but he could also hit Mark Mitchell cutting right here. Mark Mitchell's wide open. He could have thrown it to him for a flush. Instead, he gets skinny, finishes at the rim. And that's okay. When you have two options, either I'm going to finish at the rim or you're going to finish at the rim, that's a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have. 40 to 19. James Madison tries to show pressure. Fredell doesn't go attached to the middleman. And if you're going to show pressure like this, the guy that's guarding middle, which is Fredell right here, you got to guard middle. Like you got to guard the middle guy. So the two guys, number zero, number two, Roach is going to the trap zone, like I talked about on Twitter uh, with Jared McCain against Vermont. And right when he gets in the trap zone, he's passing. So he passes to Mark Mitchell, but the middleman is not guarding Mark Mitchell. And Mark Mitchell is clear for takeoff. If you're guarding middle, you got to guard the guy. You can't just guard the space. Could have been an and one, too. I don't know why they swiped. Dribble handoff to a shooter. Roach goes under. Roach pays the price. When it's a shooter, you got to go over. You got to go over. In the next possession, same exact action happened. Roach went over. Fredell shot it and missed. So that's learn from your mistake. Literally one possession, you screw up, get it back next possession. That's what Jeremy Roach did. Now, James Madison is going to go under on Jared McCain's shot, and he's going to score. Handoff to... Proctor, all it is is a handoff to Proctor, a flare screen for Jared McCain. Look at McCain. He turns his head immediately, and he's getting his feet behind him. Getting his feet behind him to get some power, square, shoulders, legs, head, all at the rim. Doesn't touch any part of the net or any part of the rim. Just when he catches it, look at that right foot, how quick it goes to the front. Dude, are you kidding me? Just the twitch he has to get his shot off is insane. Just a great base. Tyrese Proctor, don't leave your feet. James Madison likes to go in transition. Gets an easy two. Here, here. While they go for two. Watch John Shire. He wants Duke to have the last shot in this, this half. And you're like, 44 seconds. Yes, clock still goes in college. Mark Mitchell, take your time. Do not go and grab the ball. Make the, the referee, like throw it to the referee to throw back to you. Like take your time getting the ball, throw it to the ref, which he does, and then the ref gives it back to him. And Shire's like, whoa, whoa, relax. And he wants he wants Mark Mitchell to roll this ball to Jared McCain. He wants him to throw or roll the ball to Jared McCain because he wants the final shot. And you see him like, whoa. Whoa. Instead, he throws a Jared McCain and he's pissed because he wants it to be rolled. And it's going to cut away from him yelling, but he's going to go like this afterwards. You can kind of see it on my freeze frame, but he goes like this because he wants that last shot. And that's really good coaching. Like it's underrated. Duke was up 20, 22. And you're like, all right, cruise until the half. And Shire's like, we're getting the last shot. We don't want them to go two for one. Unfortunately, Duke didn't do that, and fortunately for Duke, it ended in like multiple possessions in the last 30 seconds. But thought it was great coaching there by Shire to end the half. Duke comes out of the half, a little pick and roll with Phil Pawski, free roller. Roach finds him, and Phil Pawski 
when he made that turn right there, he saw a free Mark Mitchell, but unfortunately, Fredell dropped and steals that. But I saw the vision when he first looked, but then he had turned this way. And by the time he turned that way, it was picked. And then again, James Madison transition, good team. Terrence Edwards Jr. loves that spin move, and it's a really good and effective one. Duke trying to go high, low, or uh, over the top here with Filipowski. So he wants it, but Terrence Edwards Jr. is in help. Terrence Edwards Jr. is the key to this because he is completely taking this over the top out of the equation. So what happens? Here comes Mark Mitchell as a press as a stress release. So pressure release is the term, pressure release. He comes as the pressure release, and at the top of the key, he wants to go high-low now. Terrence Edwards Jr. is like, you're not throwing it high-low. Mark Mitchell's like, okay, because on the back end, while you're paying attention to me, the guards are exchanging. Guards are exchanging. Proctor's coming up. That leaves Jared McCain open in the corner, who is now Terrence Edwards Jr.'s assignment, and he's going to pay because look where he's at. If Mark Mitchell just threw it to McCain, he's wide open. That's automatic. Instead, he throws it to Proctor. Proctor one more is it. McCain still gets it off in time. Bottoms. Bottoms. Jeremy Roach has his guy in hell. And one. And one. Try and guard Duke out top. You're not going to be able to get him. Like you try and guard Jeremy Roach that high up one on one. GG's. GG's. You're not getting in him. And Phil Pousey's looking for a foul right there. I guess he was getting held. So he's looking at the referee like, come on, which flip, do not do. Lock in. Just keep playing. Luckily, Roach finds him and he finishes. But you got to play through that initial one, Flip. Got to play through that initial one. Hard work's going to pay off. And it does. Three point play. Duke's just cooking here. Again, you're not going to guard Jeremy Roach one on one. And this isn't even a one on one play. This is a set, but Roach will do this sometimes. Roach will pick his spots when to take his guy. This is a double stagger for Tyrese Proctor. Here comes Mark Mitchell, first screen. Here comes. Uh, Kyle Filipowski, second screen. Tyrese Proctor's going to come off curling. But Roach is going to bait his guy in the meantime and see, hey, is there something there? He's going to jump, and if that guy would have cut him off, he would have thrown it back to Proctor. Instead, he has him beat right away. GG's to the cup. Smooth play by Jeremy Roach. To It's a set. Duke's running a set, and Roach catches his guy napping. Gets Duke an easy two. And then tough spin by Terrence Edwards Jr. Nice touch. Tough play. And then another step back. They hit some tough ones. Jamie scored, they won 32 games for a reason. They can hit legit shots. Here's a roll again, trying to throw to Phil Powski. They're trying to go over the top. Here comes uh, Mark Mitchell, pressure release. Mark Mitchell catches it. Now you got the high low because Terrence Edwards Jr. got burned earlier in the game. He's no longer helping because he doesn't want to leave the shooters. So Duke's like, thank you very much. Here's a lob. Here's a lob. Just Duke was Duke toyed with Vermont and sets, and they toyed with James Madison all night and pick and rolls. And they toyed with Vermont pick and rolls, toyed with JMU and pick and rolls, and toyed with JMU and just sets in general. Tough spin move by Terrence Edwards. Just the kid is legit. Good play. I'm excited for his future. But this is just lazy defense by the same Terrence Edwards Jr. because Proctor got fouled on a three earlier that he made. And then on the same play, all it is is a pass to Phil Powski, and he's going to hand it right back. Catches Terrence Edwards Jr. napping. Bottoms. And then look at the hustle by Sean Stewart. Great contest, and you know it's not a foul when the defense, when the opposing bench doesn't react. When the opposing bench does not react, that says it all. I mean, look where, look where Sean Stewart is, right here. He's looking. He doesn't know where the ball is, but then he sees immediately Terrence Edwards Jr. is going. So what does he do? He chases him down like a cheetah. Contests the layup. Duke's out and going. 
And here comes a McCain three in transition, all thanks to Sean Stewart. Just a fantastic play by Sean Stewart there. Tough mid game, mid game, mid range pull up. But Duke's just cruising. I mean, there it is what it is. Be strong with it, flip. Jerry McCain coming off a ball screen. Jerry McCain's obviously hit every shot he's taken so far. This is what makes Jerry McCain so scary. He's not a great ball handler like, like Rose can blow by a guy with his ball handling. Tyrese Proctor can go ISO. McCain's not really an ISO guy, but while how he gets to the rim is because he's such a good three-point shooter that Fredell is scared for his life that he is going to shoot this. So what does Fredell do? He overcloses out. He overcloses, and he's beat. All Jeremy Kane does is just catch and go. Doesn't do any type of move, just catch and rip. And this is straight downhill line drive because his guy overclosed. And that's what happens when you're a lethal shooter. And then Roche just gets called a little mouse in the house there. Phil Palski picked up his fourth earlier. Duke's been switching everything, and it's been working. That's why they have 68 points and Jane US 43. It just got called in a bad mismatch there. Now, James Madison's trying everything. They're throwing the kitchen sink at Duke in terms of defensive schemes. They're jumping the ball screens now. But when you jump the ball screens, you jump into trap. It's a press, it's a press release again, slipping it. So Sean Stewart realized that he slips. And then he does a really good job of having poise here because when he catches this, he has a defender in his face. He's going to throw to Mark Mitchell or he's reading to Mark Mitchell, but Fredell's dropping down. Fredell's dropping down, so he goes to the next read, which is Tyrese Proctor, three. Like Duke was crushing James Madison and whatever they threw at them defensively. Duke was just composed. Duke was composed against Vermont, and now they're showing composure against James Madison, who was supposed to be the more physical and more, more athletic defensive team, like slip the trap, all right, catch, observe, read, no, yes. Fantastic basketball is being played right now. And step into a three, 40% three-point shooter. He had a quiet night. Thank God he had a quiet night. And now, again, they're pressuring – they're trying to trap up a ball screen. Sean Stewart needs to make this cut more straight. He kind of rounds it out to where the backside guy could probably come and steal this. Proctor realizes it. Terrence Edwards Jr. does not do a good job of sealing off Proctor when you're the that guy that's on the side of the ball handler like Terrence Edwards Jr. is. You want to force him up the line, force him to go to half court. He doesn't close that off. So Proctor gets that angle, and he makes them pay the price. They try and trap him, leaves Roach wide open because Roach's guy was taking Sean Stewart. It's just a really good play by Proctor. And now, after that timeout, James Madison is not trapping ball screens. Not trapping ball screens. So instead, what James Madison is doing, they're icing it. They're icing ball screens. Proctor still is patient. Proctor is going to do what Proctor does, and he's going to have this dance. He's going to get to a spot. Little bump, shoulder, fade, money. He does that once a game, and it worked out there. Mark Mitchell, relax, relax, low percentage shot. Can't have that, and they're going to go off and running. And this is just a tough play for TJ, TJ Power. Fredell can shoot, and he's going to Jim or Fred at this and shoot that from about 33 feet. Doesn't hit any part of the rim. Welcome to welcome to the game, TJ Power. I'm just going to mouth you from right here. And there's nothing he could have done. He just walked into that. Nothing TJ Power could have done because Fredell just walked into that. Roach trying to guard a bigger guy. Good play. And then one four action. Rejects the ball screen. Got to go up strong. Got to go up strong. They somehow keep that with Duke here, but Mark Mitchell, you got to go up six, what is he, six, eight? 
Fredell had a couple blocks, and then he had obviously the scary incident with Jalen Blakes, which wasn't dirty. He made a play on the ball, just unfortunate landing for Blakes, and he seemed to be okay as he sat on the bench later in the game. But I need Mark Mitchell to really finish those for Duke in the next round. Textbook defense here by TJ Power and Sean Stewart. That's what you call walling up an uh, offensive player. Defender does not go down at all. They're both straight up, and you get this type of shot. Neither of them went down at all with their hands. Leads to an ill-advised force shot. Roach rejects the ball screen because they are icing the ball screens. So Roach is going to reject this like he does once or twice a game. Rejects the ball screen. James Madison's out of position. Leads to a lob and a Sean Stewart yell. I love me a good Sean Stewart yell. The guy who's guarding Sean Stewart probably shouldn't have came up that quick, but he did anyways. Again, ice and ball screens. Roach still attacks him, pulls up. Just whatever, whatever defense that James Madison tried to throw at Duke, Duke's just like, thanks very much, we'll take this. Catch and rip, good. And then TJ Power. Look, these are big minutes for TJ Power and Sean Stewart. Sean Stewart was in foul trouble first half, so he was limited. Second half, he got a lot of run. TJ Power got five or six minutes, I think, in the second half. And he saw the ball go in in March Madness. You never know when your name's going to be called. Uh, Jeremy Rose dislocated his finger. He could have broke his hand. And then Jalen Blakes takes that fall. TJ Power, you're the next man up. So these type of moments are big for a guy to see a ball go through the hole in the round of 32 because he might be counted on due to foul trouble in the Sweet 16. You know what I mean? Like, I'm very proud of T.J. Powers stepping in and, like, just being confident, knocking knocking one down. Sean Stewart did a really good job of playing within himself in this game too, and it was a fantastic win by Duke as a team as a whole. Again, here we go. We'll finish with this. Showtime, Sean Stewart, flush, yelling at the ball. Sometimes I think Sean Stewart sees ghosts. He just yells at random objects. I love it. It's like a little Kevin Garnett in him. He's just going to yell at anything, and you need that. Just catch. Thank you very much. GGs. Have a nice night. Drive home safe. Duke advances to the Sweet 16, and that does it for this video breakdown. I appreciate you guys watching all of my breakdowns that I've made. It truly means a lot. Hopefully this, hopefully this comes out all right. I'm praying it does. And I'll have this uploaded. And please like and subscribe. Uh, comment to like what other video breakdowns. Of, the season will be over in a month. And uh, let me know what type of film breakdowns you're interested to see. Like if it's player breakdowns, random other players that are not Duke affiliated, just leave your, leave them in the comments and I'll see what I can do. But in the meantime, I will hopefully this week be recapping or previewing a scouting report of Duke's next opponent. As I'm recording this right now, Houston and A&M are playing. So I hope to have that out this week as well as a scouting film breakdown of Texas A&M or Houston. So until then, I'll see you guys later.